The reason why we conducted this study is because there are these new medications for hepatitis C that in the clinical trials have had incredibly high sustained virologic response rates. However, in the past, we have noted that um, agents in the real world don't perform quite as well as they do in clinical trials because in the real world, you have patients who are slightly more difficult to treat, you have more competing comorbidities, you have providers who don't have as much time. So we wanted to see if the clinical effectiveness in the real world was as good as the clinical efficacy that we'd seen in the clinical trials. We chose the uh, specific patient population in part because I work for the Department of Veterans and Affairs. And the veteran population has a higher rate of hepatitis C than the American population in general. So hepatitis C is an incredibly high priority condition for the Department of Veterans Affairs. So the Department of Veterans Affairs wanted to know whether these medications were working for the patients that we take care of. The study focuses on genotype 1 patients because ledepazivir, sofuspavir, with or without ribavirin, um, while that is approved for several genotypes, ombitasvir, paratepravir, ritonavir, plus dasabavir, with or without ribavirin, the other medication that we compared in this trial is only approved for genotype 1. The primary result was that overall the intention to treat SVR rates for all of the regimens were incredibly high and nearly matched the results that we had seen in clinical trials. For us in the Department of Veterans Affairs, this was really unprecedented. In With the previous medications, let's say bosepavir tilapavir or pegylated interferon ribavirin, there had been a substantial decrease it, when you looked at effectiveness compared to efficacy. For us, this is really one of the first times where the clinical effectiveness nearly matches the results that we had seen in the clinical trials. In multivariate models, we find that there are several significant independent predictors of sustained virologic response rates. So African American race, having a BMI of 30 or more, having a FIB4 score over 3.25, or being treated with um, ombedesvir, paratepravir, ritonavir, plus dasabavir, and ribavirin with, um, compared to ledepazivir, sofuspavir. Those four factors are independent, significant negative predictors of SVR. If you repeat the multivariate models and limit it to patients who completed 12 weeks of treatment, then um, African-American race no longer is a significant negative predictor of SVR, and um, treatment with ombitasvir, paratepravir, ritonavir, disabavir, and ribavirin is no longer a negative significant predictor of SVR, suggesting that those two factors really have to do with excess early treatment discontinuation rates, and so that if you can get patients to take the full course of 12 weeks, then those factors that don't matter. It is interesting that in the multivariate models limited to 12 weeks of treatment, a BMI of 30 or more still is a significant independent negative predictor of SVR, and having a FIB4 over 3.25 is still a significant independent, independent negative predictor of, of decreased odds of SVR. One, we actually, that actually these drugs work as well in, in the real world as they did in clinical trials. And for us, this is really a stunning sort of result. We have never seen clinical effectiveness nearly this high and nearly as close to what we see in the clinical trials. I think the other take home message is, not surprisingly, but that adherence really matters. And that it's really important to get patients to take their 12 weeks of medications. If you can get them to take 12 weeks, the medications work incredibly well. And some of the factors that had previously predicted decreased response rates, those no longer pan out if you can get the patients to take the full 12 weeks.